Hi, my name is Jim Ranchler, and I'm a physics professor at a place called Xavier University of Louisiana in New Orleans. It's a very nice little school. Sometimes I teach a course there called Basic Video Game Physics, and that's what this video is all going to be about. It's going to be part of a series of lectures for that course. Uh, this course is basically about how to make um, mechanical simulations, right? We're talking about video game physics, game physics, basically. And it's a very uh, low level. We almost get to the point where you could do Angry Birds. Not quite, not really there. but. We're getting pretty close. Uh, if we had maybe an extra half a semester, we'd end up um, being able to program something like that. So this this course is this course has a name that a lot of people don't like. I've had somebody come in and make fun of the name of the class, even though it's a you know very interesting, very in depth class. But just because it says video game in the title people don't like it. And that's because, you know, not very serious people require very serious titles in those courses. Uh, but a serious person understands that, you know, you need marketing. If I were to if I were to write this in the boring academic sort of um, way, if I were to give it a title in a boring academic title thingy, uh, it would be something wonderful like interactive mechanical simulations in Python. And at that point, I would have nobody sign up for the course, uh, rather rather than you know give them something that they're interested in. It's very very interesting and it's very very fun, uh, but you, you know if you give people the wrong sort of perception at the on, at, at the inset, right, then you know it never becomes fun. It's all just you know. Um, x x one equals x zero plus uh, V delta T. I mean, that's that's it. That's not really fun. What's fun is having um, balls shoot across the screen, right? And um, trying to hit them with bats and things like that. So that's uh, th that's the whole reason why we have such a such a um, non-academic title for this course is just to make sure that you understand that this is fun, right? I have a lot of fun doing this. Uh, when I first learned Python, uh, which is what we're going to be doing this in, I. I said, you know, this is the most fun I've ever, well, not the most fun I've ever had with the programming language. This is the most fun I've had programming since I, um, since I programmed in AppleSoft Basic. Now, that tells you how old I am, unfortunately, but it also tells you that this is very, very fun. It's a, it's a very fun language, and actually making the games, that's also fun. So this is something I think you'll enjoy. Um, in front of you, you see a design document. So in the course, I have a, I have um, a do design document for every project. And my project over the summer is going to be a um, baseball game. I'm just going to program a baseball game, and hopefully you'll be able to use that um, step-by-step -step programming technique that I'm using in the course, or if you're not taking the course, by yourself to help understand how I'm doing each of the different things that I'm doing while I'm building up this physics-based video game. And I, I think that's probably a good method to have one long drawn out example like that. So I'm going to do this over the summer. This is my summer project. So I need a design document just like I'd have my students um, start with. And so I've put one out here. Now, obviously, this is the kind of thing that I just sketched out on a piece of paper. But it has sort of all of the parts that I'd normally use. So you see on the left hand side, I've got a, um, I've got what? I've got a pitcher and a batter and a ball. I've got different objects and I have some notes about what sort of things happen as far as the uh, physics are concerned and what they do when they hit each other and things like that. Um, you know, I might on an actual thing that I give somebody to, to write out, have some more detail that I want them to tell me before they start programming. But this is probably sufficient most of the time. And then on the right, I have a flow chart of sorts. It's actually a pretty, um, it's actually a pretty uh, in-depth flow chart. It's a little more in-depth than usual. But I want to talk about some things while I go through it. So that's, that's what I have here. Now, there is a part that's probably going to be under my face. And that part is going going to talk about controls and things like that. Um, basically, it says something like, you know, you press space and the pitcher throws the ball. 
and you press space if you're the other guy and the um, batter hits the ball. And if you press R, it resets. That's about it. So, so that's what I've got going on. So let's just look at this left-hand side in depth first, right? So what do I have? I have um, a pitcher, a batter, and a ball, right? And I've got some animation panels, some sketched out animation panels, and so forth and so forth. So um, I could make those look better. And in fact, I did. I've drawn out a few animation panels there. I'm going to go with three animation panels um, on this. Uh, I think that when I'm actually going to write this part here, I'll use the five animation panels, but the three animation panels will make that um, block diagram, that um, flowchart, a lot easier to deal with. So uh, otherwise I have to do a couple more things and it actually goes off of the screen. So I'm going to stick with the three that I originally wanted and I'll just use the five later on. Um, so I've got the um, five guys there for the... Um, pitcher and at the end of that pitch he creates a ball that's what the pitcher does the ball is going to be moving to the left so that's what pitchers do uh, then we have the batter and the batter is going to be inactive until he wants to actually hit the ball at which point um he um swings the bat hits the ball and makes a home run or a foul ball or whatever it is that you know batters like to do these days so that's more or less how these things work. So I've got all these animation panels. In fact, we're going to start by in the next time, the next time I do one of these PowerPoints, uh, assuming that I get done with this one. But the next time I um, do one of these PowerPoints, we're going to turn this into a stick figure. And then at the very, very end, I'll come back and put these guys back in um, because we don't really want to worry about that. That doesn't go, isn't going to help you with anything. And I'm going to need the stick figure for other things. So I've got this guy. He looks like a um, baseball player. And I just want to show you what the animation is sort of going to look like before I go on, right? And that's what the animation sort of looks like, right? I can do that again, back up. Not, you know, just sort of like a um, batter swinging a bat. It's, it's not too... Um, complicated at all really so that's that's where we want to go with that um, it's not going to be very complicated but that's that's why I have the different animation panels is you know just to make give an illusion of motion where there isn't any real motion uh, that goes that really goes a long way actually and we'll do that in about the fifth or the seventh um, actually I think about the seventh um, the seventh in class exercise we'll do some uh, you know, simple animation before we get into the real, uh, into the real animation. So we'll do the fake animation before we do the real animation with actually keeping track of um, the physics of the thing. All right. Um, now we're going to talk about the ball. And when I talk about the ball, I'm going to actually show you how, how it's going to hit things. So you see, um, with the ball, I've got a bunch of um, different ideas about how to make it look like it's going fast. Right now, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I've done a few calculations here and there just to try to figure out how how many uh, actual frames the ball is going to be on the screen. We're not going to have to worry about anything making it look like it's going fast because it's going to go real fast. Um, unless I do some other stuff, and I might do a little bit of other stuff at the end to you know speed it up and slow it down, so we have a playable game at the end instead of just something that conforms to physics exactly. All right, but. I'm going to have this ball, and on the very right-hand side of that um, bit there, I say gravity and collisions. Those are the physics things that happen with the ball. And I'm just going to show you what's, what are, what's going to happen. So the ball's going to be moving to the left, and the guy's going to hit it, right? So it just does that. Simple enough, right? I, I mean, I think you can see that. So if you look at this, the ball is actually falling as it moves to the left. So it's moving to the left at a constant speed, but it's falling down at a greater and greater speed. Um, at, at some point, the player presses space bar so that he starts swinging the ball. See, it's falling down, and then he hits the ball. At this point, there's a force going sort of uh, diagonal and up and it sends the ball upwards and then it goes off of the screen here it doesn't go off of the real real screen but it goes off of um this little chunk that i have so that's what the ball the ball animation is going to look like um and after after that the guy resets so that's more or less that um left hand part that 
um, front page of the design document. The back page of the design document is this uh, flowchart. As you can see, the flowchart is nasty and messy, so you know I can redo it so it looks a lot nicer. So what I'm going to do for the last part here is I'm just going to follow this flowchart all the way through and see what happens, right? So we're going to start and then we're going to wait for a pitch. So we've got the batter just standing there and the pitcher just standing there. Uh, this is at our very start, so the iteration number is zero. I guess it's not really an iteration number, but it's the first time that we're going through the um, main loop, the game loop in main, uh, which if you've looked at some of my other videos, you've heard about. So the first time that we're going through main, um, the batter's in state zero. There is no ball. I have not created the ball. The ball is going to be created when the, when the pitcher throws it, and the pitcher is in state zero. Right, the, and each one of these, the pitcher and the batter, each have three states: zero, one, and two. All right. Um, then I ask, then I go through and I say, um, has the pitcher pitched? And the answer is no, and it goes back here. And so we have the the batters in state zero. If you if you look in the little square, and if you can see it in the little square, there's a B zero. That means the, the capital B zero. That means the batters in state zero. The pitcher is still in state zero, so there's, there's P zero, capital P zero, and that means the pitcher is in state zero. And there's a minus B, which means not B, which means no ball. There is no ball. Okay, now we're going to ask again, has, is there a pitch? And at this point, yes, we're going to let the guy pitch. So we're going to animate the pitch after that. So if we're animating the pitch, basically we're using some of those interior um, panels, right? So when I when I do the animation um, video, I'll do all five of those animate all five of those animated guys, right? All in stick figures. Um, but right now we're going to just look at this. Now the batter stays in that in that thing. The batter hasn't done anything. The um, pitcher he hasn't finished pitching, so he isn't he hasn't um, released the ball. So there's still no ball. But the the pitcher's animation panel is in um, the intermediate state intermediate state one, right? So that's him throwing the ball, not having thrown the ball. And there's nothing to do after after that intermediate state until you get to the throw ball part. And at that point, we create the ball. All right. And um, we put the pitcher in his state two. And still the batter's not doing anything, so he stays in state zero. Uh, there's nothing else going on here. The ball's been created. Um, and we're going through that main loop, you know, the third time. Um, then for the fourth time, we're, we end up in this part where we have this thing. It says BX plus plus. That's just meaning, that just means that I'm moving the ball forward towards the batter. All right, uh, and nobody else has changed. The only thing that's changing is the um, position of the ball. Um, and every time the ball, while the ball is in flight, we always have to check a couple of things. We have to check if the batter swings, or if the balls hit the left-hand edge of the screen. Uh, if the batter swings, then we can do a bunch of other stuff. If it hits the left-hand edge, then the batter missed, and you know it's a strike. Right, and let's assume that for the first um, time we go through this, um, nothing else has happened. So neither of those things happen. So we go back to the ball in flight, and it moves a little bit more to the left. And this time, when we ask our question, well, "What's happened?" Well, the batter is going to swing. All right, so we're going to say yes. The batter has pressed um, space, and we go up into this intermediate state for the batter. And the ball still go, still goes forward a little bit more, and um, the pitcher stays in that um, number two. Uh, then we see, has it hit? Well, obviously it has hit, so it goes back into flight. Now we have BX minus minus. It's going in the other way. It's going away from the batter. And now we're going to ask ourselves, does it hit the ground or does it hit? Um, not hit the ground, and the answer is no. It goes back up, moves a little farther. Does it hit the ground? No, it doesn't. Goes back up, moves a little farther. Does it hit the ground? Yes, it's hit the ground. And so we go back to the beginning. That's about it. And I'll just leave you with this picture here of a um, sort of cleaned up design document that's actually in PowerPoint. Um, the only difference here is that 
you know, I've got the um, drawn out animation panels and that force diagram on the bottom. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that's, so, that's helpful.